<clears throat> okay, cool. We're live. Let's get this thing on the road. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Rave Green TV. And I'm going to be doing this review live because I don't really have the time, unfortunately, to edit uh, a review and have it out within today. So I think it's kind of time sensitive. I should probably do the review ASAP. And I appreciate any of you that's joining in during the live. I'm not going to be looking at the live chat. This will kind of be up just like a normal video, but I'm just doing it in a live format because don't got the time right now to to edit, chop it all up, and get the video ready. So this is going to be my review for the Seattle Sounders FIFA Club World Cup match against Al Ali. And yeah, I mean, as you guys can see through the thumbnail, it was a heartbreaking match. If you were here with me during my live, I appreciate every single one of you that was there and, you know, that were a part of that. And yeah, so let's get started about talking about the game. So the lineup comes out. A uh, couple of head scratchers, to be honest, from Brian Schmetzer, but nothing like extraordinary, mind blowing exactly uh, from him. You know, we see Josh Atencio start, which was probably one of them. Jackson Reagan starting over Javier Arriaga. We're playing the 4 2 3 1. I thought we should have played a 5 in the back. I thought that would have maybe been a little bit of a better formation to play in this match, but we didn't. Josh Atencio starts. Jackson Reagan starts. Christian rolled on out wide, but outside of that, pretty much everyone's the same. Not really no surprises there. And this is probably the biggest positive I have from the Sounders is how we played in that first 10 to pretty much halftime. So pretty much the first half. That first half from the Sounders, it surprised a lot of people. They didn't necessarily dominate the game, but we're looking like the team most likely to score, and they look like the team that was you know, on the front foot. And I was like, okay, that's very positive. So it seems like there's a reason why that he decided to play this formation. I was like, you know, fair play to Brian. I hope he decides to switch it up in the second half because, you know, you know, Al Ali is a team that is experienced in this competition, have more legs than we do because it's our first match of the season. So we probably should make some switches and that come the second half. Not saying right from the get-go. Some people were saying right from the get-go, but for me, I was just thinking, hey, let's just make subs maybe 10, 15 minutes in. I think around the 55th minute, Al Ali makes a triple substitution because they know, they were confident that, hey, we can win this game in 90 minutes. We haven't played that well throughout the first half, um, and we're starting to, you know, slowly ease ourselves in from the second half that we're starting to get back onto the front foot. So we're going to make a triple substitution, which is a ballsy play from their coach, but it ended up obviously paying off, And but we're not gone to that point yet. And Brian Schmetzer decides to go with a bit of more of a passive tactic he brings on Jao Paulo around, I think, the 65th, 70th minute, which is good, but I think it's a little too late because now Al Ali are starting to really get on the front foot in this game. You can see the Sounders starting to get gassed. And that's my biggest problem with this. You know that this is our first professional game of the season. We have some leggy players. Why not switch up the team more? And that's probably the biggest kind of excuse that a lot of fans have about this match is oh, we, this is our first professional match. Al Ali is midway through their season. And I think that's what hurts me the most when talking about this game is, is if we, we can't have the energy of going into this game, like we can win it. We, we're going to be playing Real Madrid, this and that. So coming in with so much confidence. And then when we lose, we're like, oh, well, it was our first game. It was a good run. It was, it was a very respectable performance. But that's the problem is, I think that's what hurts the most for me is we could have won this game. We truly could have won this game. I think the difference was was one coach decided, you know, to risk it more and was more confident in going for it compared to Brian Schmetzer. And so now we see around the 65th minute, Jao Paulo's in, but the team looks gassed. Most of these players, you know, he's a guy that can spring the attack, like spring counter attacks, can get more of the off the defense to offense, you know, the flow in the midfield. But the players look tired. They looked gassed. And so I thought, okay, let's bring on Ebert, who Brian Schmetzer spoke highly about during preseason, during the offseason, that, hey, this guy's made me contemplate. I should maybe start playing two strikers. And we don't see him. We don't see Freddy. We don't see Eber. And then Liao Chu, I'm still 50-50 with, but still, I think maybe he could have made a difference. But Eber and Freddy Montero should have been absolute shoo-ins to come into the game sooner. But we didn't. You know, and then more and more we go into the game. And you can tell at this point, at around the 82nd minute, when Brian Schmetzer subs on Danny Leva, 
He's trying to play out for the draw to go to extra time and possibly penalties. Part of me in the back of my head going into this match was thinking, is Brian going to try to pull out the same tactics like we did against Toronto? And the answer is yes. He was trying to do that clearly because you bring, you take off Christian Roldan, who I think was having a decent game in this match for Danny Leva, who I love Danny probably shouldn't have gone into this game in my opinion. And so big head scratcher. And the worst part of it all is we've only made two subs. It's the 85th minute. Clearly we have some leggy legs. Al Ali are getting back into the game. You have five subs you can use in this match, five subs. And we don't want to use the other three, till obviously afterwards comes the goal, where comes from Danny Leva making a mistake in the midfield, losing the ball. We get lucky, it goes off the crossbar. And then uh, Alex Roldan, who I spoke about during the live. <sighs> Alex Roldan. The biggest problem I have with Alex for the past year is he's a great right wing back. And I mean great, good slash great right wing back. But as a right back, he is not so good, especially not defensively. And the fact that we don't have any backup right backs, backup right backs that kind of like are chomping at the bit to try to become a starter for our team. And we only have Alex Roldan. He knows he can get away with making mistakes, possibly costing us some opportunities because he's going to start again. And in th that goal, I it's unlucky. It's, it's a bit unlucky. It's deflected, but Alex Roldan doesn't press the ball. He puts in a little sissy's foot to try to block it where that shot was very tame. And it was either going basically two Stefan Fry's gloves or going wide. It wasn't that great of a shot, but since Alex Roldan didn't press, didn't put his body on the line to get a proper block in, you know, it nicks off of him because he just thinks, okay, let me just put my foot at it halfway. I'm not going to press the ball. I'm not going to go at him. We concede. And you know, then it goes back to our squad depth, you know, talking about, you know, only players we could really bring on are Eber, Freddie, and uh, Liao Chu. Kind of goes back to the stuff I've been talking about, how we should have probably made some more signings and switched up more of the team, but that's past the point. Then we finally see Eber and Freddie come on and added time. Why? Just why, man? It's It was a little too late. It wasn't going to happen. You kind of knew once the goal went in, we weren't going to score. So, when talking about it, I think what really cost us was the second half and the tactics Brian Schmetzer deployed. You know, we've seen it many times from Brian, from the three of four finals we played uh, against Columbus and twice in Toronto against Toronto. He tried to pull out the tactics of less so in Columbus, but let's try to play for extra time. Let's maybe, we'll maybe nick a goal. And I think that's the thing that upsets me. I don't want to be negative, but the fact that we were so close and I spoke about it in the stream, those last 10 minutes, we were so close. If we get a goal, we could play against Real Madrid. Imagine me doing a preview, talking about us playing against Real Madrid. I would want that to happen. And that's the most frustrating part. I know we, this is our first game of the season. We're just going off preseason, this and that, all these like excuses but we could have won this game. We were actually playing pretty well. Like we had half decent opportunities. But we didn't have the cutting edge to finally get create an opportunity for ourselves in the final third, which has been my biggest issue with us for the past year and a quarter that, you know, we're not clinical in the final third. We don't have a cutting edge moment outside of Rui Diaz 50 to 75% of the time. And that's what's hurting us. And Brian, those second half tactics really screwed us over. Because you decide to play more of a passive tactics compared to the other coach who has experience in this competition decides let's go for it. Because he had confidence in his team to win the game. And I know there's a lot of excuses where, you know what, we were coming off preseason our first game. We should be proud. Yes, we should be proud of our performance. But I felt like just us being in the Club World Cup was almost like we won it. If you guys are kind of getting what I'm trying to say is is... We didn't have the mentality of now that we're in the Club World Cup, let's prove that. Let's prove that, you know, we're a guy, we're a guy, we're the team that we're going to actually make more history. We're going to beat Al Ali. We're going to play against, put up a good performance, you know, represent MLS. And I think they did it to a certain degree, but almost are kind of like, we're gassed. You know, we have the excuses. It's not a big deal. We don't have to win this. We put out a good game. And to me, that's my biggest issue is... We could have won, 
it kind of seemed like the fact we were in this club world's got first MLS team, first American team to do that. We almost were celebrating that too much instead of focusing on now let's make history and win a game in the club world cup. Let's advance. Let's make that more money for the club to get, be able to make more signings, you know, and things like that. And I think this game reminds me a lot of the problems that we had last season. It's the same dry stuff where we're kind of playing dull throughout the game. We might be down a goal. It's still nil-nil. Or like we're, you know, within that one to no goal margin. The other team gets a goal. And we just don't know what to do. We don't have a plan B. We don't have second options from our first option where, you know, we play that starting lineup. Things are going well. Become the 65th minute. Do we have a plan B to switch things up? And that's where I feel like we should be chopping and changing our team. Luckily, the good thing is now to talk about the positives now that we got the negatives out of the way. You know, this game happened. You know, it's done and dusted. And I now I what I want to see from the team is now that we have a, a first game under our belt, we should be more prepared than any of the other MLS teams now going into the season. Let's start off like a house on fire this season in MLS. If if I don't see a response against the Rapids, that's where I'm gonna be like not pressing the panic button, but being like are we going to see the same thing over and over again? That's fine. I'll excuse it for this game because, again, we played against a team midway through their season, and obviously it's frustrating because we probably could have won because Al Ali actually didn't play that great, in all honesty. Uh, they played fine, but, you know, big shout-out to any Al Ali fans that watched today's video. You, you guys, They did deserve it in the end because they, took, they, they went for it. Because at the end of the day, the only shot on target outside of the goal which I don't even know if that was even on target, was just Josh Atencio's shot from 20-some, 20 22 yards out. That was the only shot on target. So both teams didn't really have any clear-cut opportunities, and so that's what makes me sad because we could have done it. We could have been playing Real Madrid, but I think there needs to be a mentality switch a bit. Hopefully this is now the team's blooded. You know, Now they know how it feels to lose in a big tournament because this is a big tournament it's arguably bigger than the u.s open cup supporter shield i don't know about mls cup i guess in our terms but you know we're blooded now now can we be complete we should be the most prepared team going into our season or are we gonna pull the same shit where we didn't make the playoffs last year because of ccl this and that like i just want the excuses to be out the way and that's fine if we if we start off the season like a house on fire i will forgive this CCL game. I will not mind one bit. Obviously, it's bittersweet. It's heartbreaking. We played really well. We should be fairly proud of our performance, but the tactics are what I think is what frustrates everyone the most. So second half subs, why don't we, and this has been the probably the biggest problem I think most people have with Brian Schmetzer is, why do you make the sub sooner? Why don't you chop and change more often? If you're not confident with the players on the bench, then why are we changing our team up more? Because, like, if you're not confident with Liao Chu, why is he selling the Sounders? He should be sold. If you're not confident in Freddie Montero, don't renew his contract. If you buy at Bear, why don't you use him more? And so hopefully these are all learning lessons to where we will do these things come the start of the MLSC. That's the good thing is this could be a really good learning lesson. You know, we're taking one step back to take two steps forward. That's the big positive here is depending on how things go against Colorado, which obviously I'll be there. We'll be doing fan cams, all the good stuff. What's our response now? How hungry will we be that it's all over? The whole CCL Cinderella story, us being the first team to play on a big international stage is all over. Can we get back to winning an MLS? Because for about a year and a quarter, dating back to 2021, we haven't been good in MLS play. We realistically haven't been that great. So now let's see if we can do that again. And Talk about some individuals. I spoke about Alex Roldan a bit. Jackson Reagan didn't cost us the goal, but had a few mistakes in him. And this is where I'm like, I'm not saying these players are dead wood, but why don't we bring in players to comp at the bit to, you know, add more pressure, more competitiveness to these players? Because it's almost like, yo, go for it. You can make those mistakes because you're just going to start again. It doesn't make because we have no, no one else to play in those positions. And Jordan Morris was very ineffective in this game. And I'm kind of, I feel like I'm, Constantly repeating myself with him. He had a lot of opportunities where he was out wide with space, doesn't take the player on, and it just seems like he's lost a step in his game. Like, that was his biggest attribute. As much as he wasn't technically that good, Jordan Morris at least had his speed and his strength. And it seems like he's almost losing that too, but he doesn't take anyone on. He's not, he's so much of a one trick pony. As I said, I feel like I'm always repeating myself, but that's the truth with him. And he's becoming so frustrating. I think a lot more fans, not even just me, are getting frustrated. 
without you have space you don't take anyone on you your your technical ability is just not there and you don't choose to use your left foot it's always the right foot you have two feet at least if you're not going to use the left foot be cracked with your right and so you know i think those are three things to highlight nicholas ladero rui diaz i think rui diaz was fine but it's just like he was on an island all his own he never got any opportunities not much service knew who offensively wasn't that fantastic ladero is he really a TP player? I I feel like with me with Ladero is I feel like this was his last hoorah. I think depending on how things go throughout the season, I don't know what to talk about when it comes to Ladero. It just for me, he hasn't been that great for now season. I mean, he was pretty much injured all two seasons ago. He wasn't that great last season. So are we gonna make it? We need to like. With him, he's a DP, doesn't put up DP numbers. Today, he was okay, but I feel like every time he kind of had like a, that sniff of an opportunity, he kind of rushed it. He kind of rushed into that opportunity where it's kind of like, whoa, normal Ladero would be calm, cool, and collective. But him, it just seemed like got a little too excited when he, we had a half opportunity. This, like, you know, he had a little sniff on goal. Let's go for it. And like, I don't know if the, the maybe the moment got to us or whatnot, but these are kind of the points that I'm going to make. Who's to blame? I think Brian Schmetzer's second half tactics and a few individual plays of kind of the same problems we've had since last season. And I'm concerned based off of this game that are we going to have the same issues that we had last season? That's where I'm not going to, I'm not hitting the panic button, nothing like that. We should be proud of our performance, but I feel like there was a mental part of the today where we were in CCL all because we were just in CCL. That was it. That's where it all stopped. We, we, we you know, kickoff happened. We did it. We made history. But it's kind of, I, I just, my problem is, is why don't we do more? I know we were dealt the bad hand where we didn't play, but like we knew that going into it. So what? You know, that, that could be, that could be our biggest disadvantage and our advantage because no one knows how we're going to play. We could have new tactics going into the season. You know, you know, we could have a fresh formation. We could, like, you know, do something different. You know, it could be, you can make your biggest disadvantage and it's your biggest advantages. I know we weren't as match fit as everyone else, but you, we all can't lie to ourselves to say that that game wasn't there for the taking. There wasn't opportunities for us to be like, hey, if we had that killer instinct for goal, we could have taken it. I think that's what's the most frustrating for me. And then it all dates back to, we're seeing the same issues per usual. Defensively, the same players making similar mistakes. Offensively, Jordan Morris, not being very technical, taking on players. Ladero, not being normal Ladero. Rui Diaz being stuck on the, the island all by himself, and we're hoping for him to pull something out of the hat. Albert Rusnak is stuck at center defensive mid, where sometimes he has a pretty decent game, but for the most part, he's not playing his main role, and it's kind of like... But speaking of this, Josh Tensio actually had a really good game. Big ups to Josh. Um, and Jao Paulo looked really good coming on, but I felt bad because everyone else was so gassed around him. He couldn't be his normal Jao Paulo, so spreading out the play, bringing defense to offense, swinging those balls forward. And so, yeah, boys and girls, let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below of today's video. I know I did this live. I apologize. I just didn't really have the time as well. Doing a live stream, doing the preview to edit also a review as well. So that's why I did it in a live format. Um... But if you are here live, I'm not looking at the chat. I apologize. But I appreciate you guys so, so much. Thank you so much to everyone that came to the live for today's game. It really means a lot to me. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. Your thoughts on this game. Smash the like button. I'll see you all leading up to Colorado. I don't think there's going to be much content going up to leading up to that game. But there might be maybe one or two videos sprinkled in in that next two weeks. But... Colorado, that's going to be the next big thing on the channel. So I hope you all have a lovely day.